Do you like to attack your opponent's king? Who doesn't like launching an attack that leads to a quick checkmate or the opponent's position crumbles under the pressure? These positions don't come out of thin air. You first have to make weaknesses against your opponent to gain the advantage, such as creating weak squares around your opponent's king, removing key defenders, or attacking on squares where your opponent has no defense. Let's take a look at some examples of creating weaknesses. In this position, white center, especially the d4 pawn, is being put under tremendous pressure. Black is threatening bishop takes f3 when the d4 pawn would fall on the next move. White has the powerful resource d5. White advances the d-pawn to safety, grabbing space and attacking black's knight on c6. This move looks like a blunder because it opens up the long dark square diagonal, allowing black to win the exchange by capturing the rook on a1. Black's best choice is to avoid capturing the rook, allowing white a comfortable game with a strong central space advantage and well-placed pieces. If black accepts the rook with bishop takes a1, after queen takes a1, white is temporarily down material, but black gave up the strongest defender of the king, the dark-squared bishop. Look at how weak the dark squares are around black's king. Black's knight does not have a good square to move to, so after knight a5, bishop h6, white is threatening checkmate on g7. So black is forced to return the material and create more weaknesses around the king with f6. After bishop takes f8, White regains the sacrifice material and has forced weaknesses in front of Black's king. Not a good sign as the game continues. In this sharp position from the Sicilian defense, Black's queen is putting pressure on the h2 square. This doesn't look too serious as White's king and knight on f3 both guard the h2 square. Black focuses on the target and plays knight g4. Black's knight joins the queen in adding pressure to the h2 square. White's knight on f3 is now under great pressure, as it must stay on that square to keep the king safe. A serious blunder is h3. Thinking that black must now retreat the g4 knight, but white is in for a surprise after knight d4. White's knight on f3 is attacked, but if it captures black's knight on d4, black delivers checkmate with queen h2. Since white's queen is also under attack, white can't both save the queen and prevent the winning tactic knight takes f3 check. White's best choice is to lose material after h takes g4, knight takes e2 check, and bishop takes e2, losing the queen for two pieces and weakening the kingside. Instead of playing h3, white can play knight b5, attacking black's queen and helping protect the d4 square. After queen b8, white can now play h3, since the b5 knight prevents any knight d4 tricks. It looks like black needs to move the attack knight on g4, but now black can play h5. This is known as the fishing pole trap. Black uses the knight as bait. White should stay calm and not accept the knight, one idea is to play queen d2 to help bring white's knight on b5 into the center with knight b to d4. But if white accepts the knight with h takes g4, white is in huge trouble after h takes g4. The h file is now opened, so black's rook on h8 and queen on b8 work together to attack the h2 square. Once again, white's knight on f3 cannot move to a safe square because black would then deliver checkmate. White's king is in serious danger due to all of the weaknesses on the king side. Let's take a look at one more example together. One of the most dangerous attacks can happen when there are opposite colored bishops on the board. In this position, black's light squared bishop is pointing directly at white's king side. Notice that white has the opposite colored bishop, a dark squared bishop on b2. This means that this bishop is helpless in defending against black's attack on the light squares. After rook c1, 
White thinks Black has to move the queen, but Black ignores this attack and begins an attack against White's weak light squares with rook g8. If White tries to capture Black's queen with rook takes c5, the game ends quickly after rook g2 check, forcing king h1. Black has opened up the long light square diagonal h1 to a8. Now Black's attack is unstoppable after rook g1 check. This double check rook sacrifice forces White's king to move to the open g file with king takes g1. Black's light squared bishop prevents White's king from escaping, and after rook g8 check, checkmate will soon follow. Instead of capturing Black's queen, White can try to defend with g3. Notice this opens up the long light squared diagonal again, and Black has an overwhelming attack starting with the powerful rook sacrifice, rook takes g3 check. Since the f2 pawn is pinned, white is forced to play h takes g3. Black has now opened up the h file to add to white's weaknesses around the king. Can you see how black can attack on the light squares and threaten checkmate? If you found queen h5, great job. Black threatens checkmate on h1 forcing white to try and block the light squares with f3. White blocks one path, but by moving the f-pawn off the second rank, black's rook can now join the attack with rook d2. Black threatens checkmate once again, so white is forced to play rook f2. The overworked rook tries to protect the second rank, but now the light squared attack continues after bishop takes f3. Black threatens checkmate on h1, and white's position collapses after rook takes d2, queen h1 check, king f2. White is helpless against black's attack and is checkmated after queen g2 check, forcing king e1. And now black delivers checkmate with queen g1. Now it's your turn to create weaknesses and set up a successful attack.